Hello, welcome to the Junos PyEZ Authentication Learning Byte. I'm Gordon Mosley with the Education Services Department at Juniper Networks. Let's get started. After completing this learning byte, you will be able to configure Junos devices to support SSH key authentication. Anytime you establish a connection with a Junos device, that connection must be authenticated. Typically, administrators connecting to a Junos platform authenticate with a username and a password. In the world of automation, that becomes a little unwieldy. You see, when I execute, for example, a Python script that in this example is going to connect to a Junos device and retrieve the device facts, when that Python script is run, that Python script must connect using credentials. And then how are those credentials provided? Well, Python is flexible enough that you're able to include code in the Python script that will actually prompt the administrator for, to provide username, a username and password when the script is run. But that really takes a little bit of flexibility out of your automation because a lot of times this script would be scheduled to run, maybe late at night and retrieve data without anybody there to provide credentials. And without the credentials, the script would fail to run. Now, you can include a username or password in the script, and that's provided when the script is run. But as you can imagine, storing those types of credentials in a script is not very secure. Anybody with access to the script would then have access to administrative credentials. And, and so the, the most convenient and the most secure way to authenticate connections, automated connections, or even administrator connections is using SSH public key authentication. And so let's look at how to set this up. The first part of the process to use SSH public key authentication to connect to Junos devices is to generate an SSH key pair. And this is done using the SSH key gen utility on a Unix workstation. Once you run the utility, you're prompted to provide a location for the key pair and an optional passphrase to protect it. And it actually is considered a best practice to generate a passphrase that would then be used to secure the key pair that's going to be generated. And the key pair is generated really quickly and it's stored on the local administrator workstation. And now we need to copy the public key portion. It's a public private key pair. Once the key pair has been generated, the public key needs to be copied to the Junos platforms that you would like to administer. And this is done using the SCP command shown on this screen. And this is copied to a target device, the 172.2511.1 device, and it's placed in the temp directory on that remote device. The final step in the process is to configure an administrator account on the Junos platform and configuring that account to support using public key authentication. In this example, we're creating a local administrator on the device with a username of lab. We're assigning that user account sufficient permissions, a login class with sufficient permissions to perform whatever administrative functions I, I need to accomplish. And then I'm allowing that account to authenticate using the public key that we secure copied to this local device. And then I can commit the changes. Now I'm gonna connect to a VMX Junos platform and we're gonna walk through these steps and we're going to see the kind of before and after effects. How do I authenticate before I have public key authentication and how can I public uh, authenticate after I have it configured? I do not have currently any key pair generated. So I've already entered these commands to make them a little quicker for this learning byte. Uh, here's the example command we saw on the slide. I want to run the SSH key gen utility. Uh, I want to generate an RSA key pair and it will ask me where would you like to store the key. I'm going to store it in my home directory. It's called id.rsa. That's the uh, where I want to save. I can enter an optional passphrase to secure the key, and that is considered a best practice. For time purposes, I'm just going to leave it blank. And now my SSH key pair is generated. I can, I can look in the .ssh folder in my home directory, and I can see the public and private key pair stored there. Now what I want to do is I need to copy the public key using secure copy to the VMX device, and I want to store it in the temp folder on that VMX device. It's going to prompt me to authenticate, right? Remember, every connection requires authentication. And now the key pair or the public key, excuse me, has been copied to the temp folder. So let's connect to that device and complete the configuration. 
And I'll do that by secure shelling to the 172.25.11.1 VMX platform. And again, I haven't completed the configuration, so I'm prompted to log in providing a username and password. And that doesn't help me automate. That's my problem. So let's enter configuration mode. I already have the lab user account created and it's configured to authenticate using a username and password. So let's add support. We use the set authentication, load key file. And so I wanna load and associate the public key we copied earlier to the device with this user account. And the, the file was stored in the temp folder on this device. And here's the name of the public key. So now when I show the properties of this account, I can see the SSH RSA public key you know, associated with this lab user. So what I want to do now is I want to exit, you know, close. Whoops, I forgot to uh, I forgot to commit my changes. Let me let me commit those changes. Right. So they'll take effect. And then what I want to do is exit my connection with the BMX device. And let's connect back again. I want to secure shell in again. Let's see if I'm prompted for any credentials, right? I authenticated by default using the SSH, you know, public key to that device. I'm not even prompted. And now any Python scripts, for example, I run that might connect to a Juno's platform can authenticate using that same public key. This eliminates the need for me to store credentials in my Python scripts or provide credentials when the Python scripts are run. In this Learning Byte, we configured a Junos device to support SSH key authentication. Thank you very much. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence and the training community. From forums to social media, join the discussion.